Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the plastic fan. You have to unclip this metal ring, which is not the easiest thing to do, but uh, okay, so I've slowly been working this apart, so just fit the flathead in there and slowly pry the two halves or the split part of this ring and it'll eventually come off and then this is these plastic bits you have to pry them gently open in order to get it off this the metal shaft. Don't bend them too much because you want it to go back on. Alright, after a lot of swearing and prying and pulling, I finally got the fan, the plastic fan off of the uh, center shaft. And uh, what would help is if you clean off with like a Dremel or something, some of the old rust that might be built up on the end of the uh, shaft here. And then uh, it would pull off a little bit easier. There is not, I thought there was a, a lip here on the end that was preventing those uh, those tines on the plastic from pulling off, but there's not, it's just a pressure fitting. So um, once you get that metal ring off, it should uh, pull off. But um, like I said, there was some old rust on here that made it, it kind of uh, difficult. I didn't think this would come apart, but it does. Um, if you sand or use a wire wheel around the edge here and then take off the two nuts at the top, these pins will come out. And then you can pull off this top it's kind of getting caught in there, so I gotta figure out how it comes out. But it should. Comes out as a separate unit, so this top bit comes off like that. And you just gotta be careful of the wires. But I'm gonna clip off these, I'm gonna clip off these ends that I have on here, and I'll take this top bit off, and then I should be able to remove the internal workings here. As you can see, I got it all apart. Um, and I'm now going through the process of putting it all together and, and refurbishing it as, as much as I can. I don't have new uh, brushes to be able to replace those or uh, new springs in here for the, for the brush springs. So I'm just using what already came with it and putting it all back together. So you can see here um, how I got this spring, these springs in for these brushes. It's uh, tough to do with two hands. You need a third hand basically. Uh, so that's why I got this uh, zip tie on here. So uh, put the spring in, you push it in with the uh, brush and then you, you put a zip tie around it and that'll keep it uh, nice and uh, together on there. It'll keep it together while you uh, put the rotor assembly back into the center, through the center of the stator, and uh, try to put it all back together. Okay, I got that second brush in there. And what I did on the, the stator assembly is this part up here is the, the accumulator. And I just took some fine um, sandpaper and just kind of cleaned off the accumulator here and so I'll stick that back together and through where the brushes go around it. Alright now I'm going to put the end the bottom uh, cap cover on and there's two there's a basically a washer and then there's a one of these spring washers so it's kind of a, a bent uh, washer and that goes on and then 
the bottom cap goes on. Okay, when you get it back together, the center shaft, make sure the center shaft on the bottom is going through the uh, the bronze or yeah the bronze bushing down the bottom and it should be centered in there and then on the top here you're gonna want to line up there's some holes here and these long bolts are gonna go through okay here these pins go all the way through and then there's this black spacer and the spring goes on top here all right so you got these bolts going through and I've kind of just put a nut on the top just to hold it all together while I feed through the wires. I almost forgot there's a in the bottom cap there's a hole for the wires to go through and so you gotta make sure you feed those in there before you put the whole thing back together. Okay there we go I got both of those wires through the hole and now I'll feed this grommet on there to get that grommet into place um, you can do it it's uh, just use uh, like feed one side of it in and then go around the whole thing pressing it in with a flathead screwdriver it's a pain in the butt but it'll go on eventually all right so I clipped off the zip ties and so now the um, brushes are contacting the accumulator and so I'll make sure that I have good continuity by just connecting um, an ohm meter to both sides of the wire and you can see there that I do have continuity throughout the whole system so that's a good sign and so now I'm ready to put the top back on so I'll just take off these nuts that I had there holding everything together there we go some washers and the nuts. I can rotate it and make sure that it feels like there's no binding or anything and it's it spins smoothly so that, that rotor should spin smoothly inside those two bushings on either end. So it does. I'll tighten it down a little bit and then we'll give it a test. All right, we'll go ahead and give this a test. And see, I got a battery here. I'm just going to connect it to both sides. Another thing I'm doing to refurbish um, what I can on this motor is, um, is to put new uh, rubber grommets in. The old rubber grommets are kind of cracked so I'll just press these new ones into the holes here and then I'll be ready to continue all right then you slide down this bracket that you use to uh, screw the whole unit into the car and it's meant to have some rivets through here but I don't have the long enough rivets so I'm gonna just put a screw and nut in through here so we got a machine screw going through and I'm gonna put a nut with a washer on the other side so I'll button that up now to wire it up I'm gonna put one of uh, these connectors on that I have on a lot of the places in the car just to keep it waterproof um, the motor you gotta check the spin of the motor before you connect one of these, obviously, because once you once you put it on there, you gotta have the uh, the current going the right way. So this should spin uh, counterclockwise when it when you're looking at it. So make sure I connected mine to a, a battery um, here 
and checked to make sure that it was spinning the right way and which which lead was going to be the negative one and I just put some black uh, marker on that one and now I'll just connect these okay tighten down all these nuts with the screws and then shrink wrap the wiring and the last thing to do is to put the fan on so this new fan is just a pressure fit and so I'll just push it nice and straight right down on and I'll go until it just starts to pop out from the from the tip there. And I'll leave it like that until I you know, until I try to fit it in the car and make sure it's not hitting. Okay, with the motor off, you can see that screen in there. That's where the that's the output of the fan. So you can see why that needs to turn counterclockwise when you're looking at it. So it turns clockwise as it's uh, mounted and that forces the air out the middle and through that screen. So now I'll just uh, install it, mount it. When you push it in there, you can make sure that it doesn't uh, bind on that lip inside there. So the fan should not be touching. It should be pretty close, obviously, to get the best seal and the most air output, but you don't want it touching, obviously, because it'll cause rubbing and it'll uh, make a noise uh, for the fan. Okay, with the fan installed and mounted and turned on, you can hear there's no scraping or rubbing, so that's good. And in the car, you can feel the flow of the fan. Good, all right. So there we go, all buttoned up. That is a uh, refurbish of the heater blower for the uh, MGC.